uh, for the people that are watching right now, uh, this is Mr. Peyton Reed, the director of Ant-Man. Who uh, is this? Your first time doing something live on the internet? Uh, this is. Well, besides my usual uh, webcam that I spun, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, so we're located at Marvel right now on the Disney lot uh, in Burbank. Yes. How much time have you spent here in like the last year or two, whatever it's been? Uh, I've spent, uh, since we got back from shooting in Atlanta in, I believe, early December, I've been here pretty much every day. <laughs> I live here now. This is my second home. Um, also, for the people that are watching right now, if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to pop them up and I'll try to work them into the uh, the interview as we're doing this. Uh so uh, I guess the, the big thing is what for the fin- what do you want to tell people who are like watching right now about um, the movie and like what they should be looking forward to or do you want to sort of tease anything you know what I mean because you're sort of talking directly to people right now yeah well listen Ant Man is is uh, it was designed to sort of just be a fun movie it's a very different type of movie from Marvel um, particularly I think coming after Age of Ultron which is a massive giant huge scale and scope. Uh, Ant Man is sort of a more intimate thing, but it's 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 an insane movie. It's a little bit weird. Um, I always love the idea that Ant Man's powers are, of course, he can shrink, but he can control ants. And and the question always comes up: Well, what can that do in, a, in, in any sort of superhero battle? And I, I really like that the movie shows you know in a sort of a big way what can happen if you you sort of marshal these masses of ants and stuff in service of a heist. Um, I asked you this the other day, but I want to share the information with. Uh we're not going to do save or kill right now. We already did that. Uh, yeah. uh, but you you told me yesterday that your first cut was... T- tell people right now how long your first cut was versus what is finally going to be in theaters. I think the first editor's assembly of Ant-Man was <clears throat> just shy of three hours. And my original, my first director's cut was about two hours and 12 minutes or so. Um, but I was banging the drum from the beginning. It's like, I want Ant-Man to be under two hours. I want to do a movie that's tight and taut and fast-paced and kinetic and it is a heist movie at its core and I wanted to sort of have the feel at the beginning it's a little bit of a slow burn but once it catches fire it just it takes off and and that was sort of the idea of, of the feel of the movie someone's asking right now how tied into the Marvel Cinematic Universe is Ant-Man well Ant-Man certainly works if you've never seen any other Marvel movie it's got a beginning a middle and an end and it's an origin story um, <clears throat> it introduces Hank Pym, Michael Douglas's character, to the Marvel Cinematic Universe for the first time. For me, that was a thrill because Pym was always one of my favorite characters in the Marvel Comics world, and he's a complicated character. So to have Michael Douglas play Pym, a guy who's had, made a career out of playing these, you know, very tricky, you know, characters with a lot of gray area, um, it's great, and we get to explore a little bit of, you know, Hank Pym's uh, quick temper. And he is a mentor to Scott Lang, to Paul Rudd's character, but, you know, he may not always be a, a reliable mentor. One of the things, I want to get back to what I just asked you, which is deleted scenes. I always love watching deleted scenes, and you there's, what, 10, 15 minutes worth of stuff? That's probably right, yeah. I mean, uh, there was a lot of stuff. In service of making this movie really tight, some things had to go. And we put Ant-Man in a lot of different situations when we were shooting the movie. Um, but there were some sections of the movie that we cut out for, for pace and for story, but they work really well as standalone scenes. Um, you, you may or may not be able to see uh, Ant-Man help his friends uh, at, at a casino win money uh, by using his powers <laughs> in very specific ways. Uh, you may or may not be able to see, for example, Ant-Man destroy some parking meters. Um, it, random stuff like that, that, that's really fun stuff. Uh, someone was asking, will a lot of deleted scenes be on the Blu-ray? Will all these scenes be on the Blu-ray? Yeah, we're just starting to put together the uh, DVD and Blu-ray packages and, and uh, figuring out what stuff is going to be on there. And I just I want to pick the cream of the crop of the stuff to put on there. Um, I was someone who, uh, Blu-ray is a format I love. I was a guy who was um, way into VHS, and then I got into Super VHS, then I got into Laserdiscs, then I got into DVDs, and I'm one of these idiots who <laughs> buy stuff in every format. But Blu-ray to me is still right now sort of the the state of the art in terms of like having just beautiful sound and picture and and being able to enhance the experience by putting deleted scenes and you know if, if you love dancing uh, I've got lots of footage of uh, Paul Rudd dancing in an Ant-Man suit Michael Pena dancing it's it's a dance fest uh, one of the things Marvel came out with a great blu-ray box set for phase one yes. and we're nearing the end I think Ant-Man is the end of phase two Ant-Man closes out phase two which means that uh, I didn't have a chance to ask Feige this earlier but I figured there's gonna be another big box set of phase two movies 
Um, will there be possibly, have they said to you, hey, can we get some deleted scenes just for the Phase 2 box set and some for the Blu-ray? Well, listen, they have to do a Phase 2 box set. I mean, this has become a tradition. I, they have to do it. Um, in terms of additional stuff for that, we haven't really gotten to that point of, uh, of talking about it. We literally just put the finishing touches on Ant-Man, I think, three days ago. Yeah, the I saw your very, tweet. The final color correction, the final uh, visual effects, and uh, so it's it's hot off the press. I saw you tweet the movie's done the same day I was seeing the movie. Was yeah. it literally, so yeah, you yeah, finished yeah. it the day of the screen? Yeah, no exaggeration. Right, no pressure there. None. N none at all. So uh, oftentimes when you're making a movie, uh, what I've spoken, when I speak to a lot of filmmakers, they all say that there's one sequence that was incredibly tricky to get right in the editing room, one that you just kept on going back to and back to. Which was that for this movie without revealing like any big spoilers you know one of the trickiest scenes was uh what we called scott's first suit experience it's the first time that scott shrinks in the movie and it starts in a bathtub a really crappy bathtub in in Luis's apartment uh in the tenderloin in san francisco and it was tricky because it, it was gonna be the first time in the movie we see him shrink so it had to be impressive and it also had to be a little uh disorienting we talked about um it should be like mr toad's wild ride where you, you, you jump in and, and you hang on. And there's a lot of shrinking uh, sequences in the movie, and there's an arc to it. Um, in that first sequence, it's the first time Scott has experienced this, so he doesn't know how the suit works. It's his first introduction that such a thing as shrinking is possible, so it's really disorienting. But he's also thrown into these situations really quickly, and he has to react. Um, that was tricky because it had to look photorealistic. I mean, it was sort of like, okay, here we go. Here's, here's the promise of Ant-Man shrinking, and you know, as a moviegoer, you're sitting in your seat, it's like, okay, man, they better deliver. So there was a lot of pressure and, and onus on that scene to work, so we, we worked on that for a long time. A lot of people know, and again, I don't want to reveal spoilers, but a lot of people know there are two after the credit scenes, uh, both of which are awesome. There's two this time? They did two? Right. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Right. Uh, that's very funny. Uh, but both of them are awesome. Uh, and one of, I mean, they're both just great. How how early on did you know those were going to be the two scenes? I don't want to reveal anything. Sure. But you know how 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 early did you know the first one? Yes. Which is a big one for fans, and yeah. the second one. <laughs> well, uh, if there were in fact two uh, tag scenes on, on Ant Man, I can't deny I confirm that. But if there were, the the first one uh, would have been planned from the very beginning because the first one is a really crucial crucial uh, uh, part of our Ant Man story. Uh, it's definitely. Uh, the conclusion of a very important arc in our Ant-Man movie. Um, the second tag, if there were such a thing that existed uh, at the end of Ant-Man, um, was something altogether different. Uh, all I can say about that is um, it ups the ante in terms of what might happen with Ant-Man uh, in the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You, uh, this is one of those projects you came into in, a, in let's be honest, in a, in a rushed fashion. Yeah. This thing, the train was moving, yeah. and you sort of got a ticket, and you're like, let's get going. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the things, I guess what I want to know is, for you, and I normally don't ask this, but what was the biggest challenge for you in terms of trying to steer this train? Because it seems like the, the, the destination was set, and it's a question, you know what I mean? Well, the release date was set. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Um, there's an energy, the way that I came into this movie, there's an energy to it. I really had to hit the ground running, and uh, there's a Duke Ellington quote where Duke Ellington, I'm, I'm going to quote Duke Ellington in my Ant-Man. Everyone interview. watching this knows Duke Ellington. You guys sure. know Sir Duke. Right. Um, there's a quote where he talked about his process, and he said, um, I don't need time, what I need is a deadline. <laughs> and that definitely applies to this movie. There's an energy that's created when you know something has to get done, and my biggest job in the movie was to come in and just galvanize everybody, the cast, the crew, and certainly in terms of the writing and the rewriting that we were doing. Um, I grew up a kid reading Marvel comics, and um, I loved Ant-Man. And so I came into this with, when you read comics, as you know, as a kid or as an adult, you, you really have a personal relationship with these characters, and you have definite ideas about what you want to see and what you don't want to see in these characters. So I brought feelings about Hank Pym and about Scott Lang to the table, and, and there were definitely things I wanted to see in the movie. A lot of them were already there in the existing script. Uh, a lot more of them, when Adam McKay and Paul Rudd came on to, to rewrite the movie, uh, we were really in sync about elements that we wanted to, to bring to the movie and, and also things that we wanted to sort of deepen and strengthen to the movie. But we were all uh, in sync about the tone of the movie. 
Um, it wanted to be fun and fast. And a again, it's a heist movie. It, it, it wanted to sort of start with a little bit of a slow burn and then catch fire and, and just keep going. Talk a little bit about the, are there any hidden Easter eggs that people should be looking out for without revealing anything? Yes. But like, but things that maybe, you know, like 30 minutes in, you might want to look on the screen. Yeah. An hour in. All right. Well, let's go. Uh, I think any time that you're in Hank Pym's uh, beautiful Victorian house in San Francisco, you, you want to look around the room. You might notice certain details that sort of uh, talk about his, uh, his history and his experimentation with the Pym particle. There might be some miniaturized objects all around the room. Um, <clears throat> when newspapers appear on screen, there are a couple of newspapers that appear. There, there might, there's, there's a main thing when I do an insert of a newspaper that you want to look at for the story. There also might be some other things in the margins of that newspaper that are that are interesting. Um, there's an event that happens to Scott Lang in the third act of the movie. He goes he goes into a, a place that's uh, been unseen in any motion picture ever before. Um, and when he goes into that place, uh, I don't think Scott Lang sees it, but if you're sharp, <laughs> if you're a keen, sharp audience member, you might see something or someone in that environment. Is that vague enough? Uh, yes, I like the way you did that. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so we're almost done. Uh, I'm trying to look at some questions that have been popping up to try to work in some stuff. But uh, I guess I, I have to ask you, just as a fan of your work, uh, what's coming up for you in terms of, there was the rumor of the fifth Beatles movie like two years ago. Yeah. Is that still on the drawing board? And I guess the relationship with Marvel after this, are you guys having conversations about like, hey, assuming this is a hit, Ant-Man 2 or another Marvel property, you know what I mean? Right. Well, as far as the Fifth Beetle, Fifth Beetle is an amazing graphic novel uh, written by Vivek Tawari and, and uh, illustrated by Andrew Robinson. And it's a story of the Beatles' manager, Brian Epstein. Um, I was developing that project, but when Ant-Man came up, uh, I had to sort of make a Sophie's Choice and, and, uh, and, and, and pick one over the other. And so I, I talked to Vivek, and you know I didn't want to hold those guys up, so I ended up parting ways with them. I, I hope that they're going to make the movie. I think they have a director on it, but... Um, if they do, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, in terms of, of Marvel, uh, as I said, we literally put the finishing touches on Ant-Man about three days ago So um, and went straight, in, straight into the, uh, the junket. So um, there's definite talk about some things coming up, but uh, nothing concrete yet. I'm going to say thank you so much for your time, and hopefully everyone watching this enjoyed getting to see a live interview, which was the first time I've done this. So um, there you go. Uh, thank, <laughs> you, thank you so much. Let me hit start.